In this video, we're going to look at group multiplication tables in symmetry and group theory as applied to molecules. Okay, the molecule I have here is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. It is in the staggered configuration, so there is a 180 degree angle, uh, torsion angle here between HOOH2. Okay, so that's my molecule. It has four symmetry elements. It has the identity or four symmetry operators and four symmetry elements each. In this case, each element has one symmetry operator associated with it. So it has the E, the identity, C2, a 180 degree rotation, 360 over two is 180. I, an inversion center in the middle through which uh, the atoms invert. And sigma H, a plane which is horizontal perpendicular to the C2 principal axis, as the molecule is planar, as we can see. Okay, so what is the effect of all of these operations on my particular molecule here? So if I have E acting on it, or C2, or I, or sigma H. Okay, so what happens? So E acting on it leaves it unchanged. So that's gonna be uh, H1 and O1 and H2 and O2 stay in the same position. Everything is unchanged. C2, I'm gonna rotate one over here. H1, H2 rotates over here. Uh, O1 rotates over here, O2 rotates over here. Okay, and if I put some imaginary markers so that I know whether they're pointing into the board or out of the board, uh, this dot here indicating they're coming out of the board, they're still coming out of the board here and they're still coming out of the board here. This rotation was 180 degrees down the axis that I'm looking at the paper. Okay, and then the I, the inversion, that's gonna take the pointing out one here and making it a pointing in one down there. Uh, similarly, this one goes to there and reverses sign for pointing down. These X's indicate it's now pointing into the board rather than the dot coming out. Same thing for the other two. This one goes here, this one goes here, as we see. Okay, and sigma H, uh, all of them stay in the same relative position, but now they're pointing into the board instead of pointing out of the board. Sigma H, they're all in the molecular plane, now their arrows point down instead of pointing up. Okay, and that's mainly all for labeling purposes so that we can see the following of what we're about to do. Okay, so now we're gonna make what we call a, a group multiplication table. We're gonna make a table of the products of all of these operations and prove that they are in fact part of a group because in order to be a group, they have to satisfy the properties of a group. So they have to have, uh, they have, to have an identity element that we do. They have to be associative under multiplication. We're not gonna really prove that part. Uh, they have to have, all products must be members of the group. We are gonna prove that. And each element was, must have an inverse. We're also gonna prove that part. Okay, so we're gonna make this table. And in each case, uh, we're gonna have operation one up here, operation two down there, and then write what the result is in the in the middle squares corresponding to those intersections. Okay, so C2, sigma H, and I, same thing going down the panels E, C2, sigma H, and I. Okay, so all those things that I said uh, must be true. All products must also be in, in the group must also be in group. Um, and all, okay, represent results of products and table. All right, so that's what I, that's what I just said there. Okay, so we're gonna fill in the table. So E times E times E, so if we operated on it with E, we get this result, stick that back over there, operated on it with E again, it's still gonna be E. Okay, um, if we do C2, up do this operation, then operate on that result with E, 
it's just going to stay the same because that's what E does. So it's going to leave it as uh, C2. Same thing for sigma H, same thing for I. If we operate on it with with uh, the various operation, take the result, operate on that result with E, the result stays the same. So the products here are all going to stay the same. Likewise, if we operate on it first with E, we get this result, which is just what we operate on it with our various operators next. So the same thing going down the table, we're going to get C2, sigma H, and I. <clears throat> okay, now we get more fun. So C2, if we do C2 and then another C2, so we rotate it by 180, we get over here, which is this result, then we rotate it by 180 again, one goes back up here, so we get back to our original spot if we do C2 twice. C2 squared just equals the identity, C2 squared is C1, which is E. So this is E. So we found the inverse of C2, it's just C2, it's itself. Doing it, doing it twice gives you E, so it is its own inverse. And spoiler alert, that's going to be true for every operation in this table here. So sigma H is the same thing. We go from pointing up to pointing down. Operate sigma H again, we go from pointing down to pointing up. So sigma H, sigma H gives us E. I is the same thing, pointing up over here, pointing down over there. Do it again, we invert back, pointing up right there we end up with the same object. Okay, so for the remainder of the table, what are we going to get? Um, we can do, if we do sigma h, we take one and now it's pointing down. Then if we do c2 on that, the one is gonna be pointing down and it's gonna be over here. So which operation has the one pointing down over here? That's this. So if we do c2, then sigma h, or sigma h then c2, the result we end up with is i, which is consistent with what I said in the in the one of the earlier videos, that i is the same as s2. It's rotate by do c2, then do sigma h. So that's consistent there. We found the same result uh, by the operators as I have based off that statement earlier. So I have my c2 sigma rho, those are both i. Okay, we have C2 and I. What is that gonna do? So if I do I first, then C2. So I do I, one is down, it's over here. Now if I do C2, one is gonna be pointing down and it's gonna be up here. That is this operation, so that is sigma H. If I do C2, then I. You can convince yourself that's also true if I do the, reser if I do the reverse. If I do C2, one is now pointing up down here, and then if I do I, it's now pointing, it's, sorry, it's pointing up, it's now pointing down over there. That gives me this one, that's sigma H as well. Okay, my last product is sigma H with I, or I with sigma H. In general, these don't commute, uh, these do commute in these cases because it's a special case of a point group, which we'll talk about a little later. But in general, these operators do not commute, so you would have to be more careful uh, with these, but generally the cases where they don't commute are in bigger uh, group tables where it gets a lot more complicated. Because we can see that the number of operations here is going to square, square quadratically with the number of operations. So if I have 24 symmetry operations for benzene, this would be 24 by 24. Filling out this table would be a nightmare, which is why we choose this point group, which is nice and simple and easy to work with. Okay, so I and then sigma H. I1 is up on the left, then it's down on the right. If we do sigma h on that, it's gonna be on the right and up, on the right and up, which is C2. You can convince yourself that the reverse is true as well. Okay, so let's look at all the elements of this table. We'll see we have four E's. Every operation in this case is its own inverse, so check on that. Uh, we prove that the identity element works that, it le that uh, in each case, the identity element times an element gives itself back. So check on that property as well. Um, and then the other, prop the other elements that we had, whenever we had products of something where neither was the identity, they all formed something which is already a part of the group. So sigma H times C2 is I, I times C2 is sigma H, 
I times sigma H is C2. Everything in this product multiplication table is already an element or already an operator in the group. So we prove that this is a group, this is in group, it's closed under multiplication, all products are in the group. You can build a group multiplication table for any point group, and this will be true uh, as long as you have done the symmetry, uh, you have determined the point group and all the symmetry operations correctly, and you have done your work correctly. This will hold up for any, uh, for any point group that you have.